Hello. Today we're going to talk about two verbs, to invent and to discover. These two words are often confused by Russian-speaking students. Uh, perhaps it is uh, the ambiguity of the Russian translation that might be confusing. To discover the gravity, to discover penicillin, to invent the radio or the internet. Everything seems to be clear. To discover means to find something that already existed but wasn't known about before. For example, the scientist has discovered a new type of bacteria. Not only the bacteria, but also the disease that bacteria causes, will bear the name of the professor. Она еще и болезнь вызывает. Так, стоп, стоп, то же самое, только утвердительно. А, Сюда смотрим. Она еще и болезнь вызывает. Боже, какое счастье. Это счастье настоящее. Еще разочек. Давайте. Она еще. Она еще и болезнь вызывает. Боже, какое счастье. Счастье ученого. She discovered that she was pregnant. You might discover something you wish you had not. The less you know, the better you sleep. But that is not the case here. People invent something uh, that didn't exist in nature. They make or produce, especially a new or useful thing, or idea for the first time. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876. Plastic throwaway tableware was invented to save money. Now try to economize on the environmental impact of plastic production. The greedy pay twice. However, the verb to invent has another meaning. To make up a story or a lie in order to deceive, to produce something untrue or unreal. She invented a very convincing alibi. He invented a hundred of reasons why he couldn't pay me back the money he'd borrowed. But sometimes it turns out that inventing the bicycle and discovering America are basically the same things, doesn't it? Распознавая копипаст, то есть буквальное копирование текста, в 2013 году возникает волонтерский проект «Диссернет», который выявляет фальшивые кандидатские и докторские диссертации. Самые громкие разоблачения среди крупных чиновников и депутатов. Это не просто рынок диссертаций. У нас институт липовой диссертации в России. Уволить диссернет, конечно, не может, даже лишить степени, только изредка. Но хоть впервые обсуждаются репутации. О пойманных на списывании отзываются по сетевому прямолинейно. Палево, лажа, испанский стыд. Михаил Гельфанд, физики Андрей Ростовцев и Андрей Заякин, философ Кирилл Михайлов и журналист Сергей Пархоменко организуют диссернет как вольное сетевое сообщество. Поиск ведется в интернете и результаты выкладывают там же. Компьютерные программы находят совпадения в текстах, а волонтер проверяет, это оформленные цитаты, самоцитаты или скопипащено, своровано. Результат – таблица-раскраска. Каждая клеточка – страница научной работы. Можно открыть сайт и посмотреть, кого, кто на нем появился со вчерашнего дня. Вот эти два человека нас ненавидят. Можно в этом не сомневаться. Одну работу о раке груди списали с работы о раке желудка. В другой – ткацкая фабрика стала лабораторией микроэлектроники, а все остальные данные те же. Волонтеров обвиняют, вы позорите российскую науку. Но в первый же год их работы число защищенных диссертаций в стране уменьшилось в два раза. Наверняка за счет падения спроса на фальшак. Диссертации продают примерно за 10 тысяч в валюте. И диссернет заявляет, мы убили рынок в 100 миллионов долларов. Bet. Even 10 years before that, my teacher in translation theory and practice 
at St. Petersburg University told us how many fake scientific discoveries have been made in the Soviet Union. Uh, Pseudo-scientists uh, took advantage of the fact that uh, there was the Iron Curtain in political, public and informational life. There was no internet and those who had access to literature in foreign languages and knew these languages or hired translators became scientists. The internet and English language skills allow us to avoid getting deceived when someone passes off a stolen idea or invention as their intellectual property. On the contrary, it gives someone a competitive advantage uh, in information and the opportunity to make money from plagiarism. If you ever hear about the author's unique method of teaching foreign languages, you should know. This is either an enthusiastic neophyte who invented the bicycle or a fraudster because nothing fundamentally new in methodology can be invented. You can only improve and develop new teaching techniques in accordance with the goal set. Everything new is well forgotten old. Everything goes around in circles. The Groundhog Day. Times change and we change with them. There are quite a lot of thoughtful expressions that try to simplify the world aphoristically and supposedly find the answer to everything that is going on around us. Another one. Nothing lasts forever under the moon. Друзья, посмотрите в глаза Юлии Славы. Я вижу в них нескрываемое желание, чтобы этот торжественный момент Длился бесконечно. Но ничто не вечно под луной. I like a different expression, uh, an ironic one. The enthusiasm of a neophyte. A neophyte is a new follower of some religion, doctrine, social movement, a novice in any business. In my profession in methodology. On the one hand, the state is beautiful. The person has discovered something new. Uh, the fun begins when a person starts enthusiastically preaching their discovery and promising solutions to all problems and does it so insistently that people who've known all this stuff for ages are forced to listen to all this good news, which is no news at all. The Soviet language education can be summed to one phrase. Silent, slotting and swatting. Sounds like <laughs> the USSR. Uh, and back in the 90s, with Russia's triumphant entry into the international arena, everyone couldn't wait to learn spoken English. Um, at the same time, the standards of such English, for some reason, became everyday chatter. I want to speak like heroes, characters in the movies. I've got a question. Uh, for example, here's the situation on the screen. A man and a woman are lying in bed and uh, muttering something to each other. Let's say uh, you master this style of communication, so what? Who are you going to talk to you in this way? Earlier I was thinking about how I was annoyed and <laughs> it was going to sound strange, but I was really excited about that. And then I was thinking about the other things I've been feeling and I caught myself feeling proud of that, you know, proud of having my own feelings about the world. like. The times I was worried about you, things that hurt me, things I want. And then I had this terrible thought. Like, are these feelings even real? Or are they just programming? And 
That idea really hurts. And then I get angry at myself for even having pain. <laughs> oh, what a sad trick. An endless sectarian preaching of the communicative approach with mythologies such as overcoming the language barrier or immersion in the language began. Logically, the communicative approach is the development of all the communication skills, both active, speaking and writing, and conditionally passive, listening and reading. Otherwise, it is no longer a communication, but a one-way street at the end of which there is a dead end. The communicative approach in the neophyte's perception is a sort of cutting edge. Meanwhile, it was no Homsky theories in the 1960s, focusing on competence and performance in language learning that gave rise to communicative learning teaching. But the conceptual basis for the communicative approach was laid in the 1970s by a linguist uh, Michael Holliday, who studied how language functions are expressed through grammar, and Del Himes, who introduced the idea of a wider communicative competence instead of Homsky's narrow linguistic competence. To somehow get rid of this ego, neophytes have taken up the lexical approach. Lexical approach is a method of teaching foreign languages described by Michael Lewis in the early 1990s. But this doesn't prevent the neophyte from considering it the latest trend. I will definitely tell you about the lexical approach, its supporters and critics, another time. The neophyte is the best breeding ground for the information virus called delusion. This year we have faced dreadful challenges. The pandemic, the economic recession, environmental problems and the need to work, learn and communicate with people in a new way. History shows that after such points of no return, the recovery and uplifting are going to be slow and tough. New Forward Language School wishes us all a new year of new inventions and discoveries in public and private life and healing from lost delusions. And uh, there may be a lot to rediscover and reinvent, but anyway, Let's be honest and not pass off discoveries as inventions. <laughs>